Hello everyone, welcome back to Oni Chan. After Luffy angrily challenged Kaido, he was struck down by him with a thunderclap 8 trigrams attack. So, Luffy was taken to Udon prison by Kaido to break his spirit and make Luffy one of his subordinates. Here, Luffy met Hio. Therefore, he helped Luffy train in advanced armament hockey to prepare to defeat Kaido, and Luffy fought to liberate the prisoners in Udon. Meanwhile, the others and the nine red scabbards gathered all the samurai in Wano, to prepare for the upcoming battle against Kaido and rescue Wano country. At this point, Luffy and all the samurai were prepared for the battle. However, the nine red scabbards discovered that their ships had been destroyed, which left Kinemon in despair. Without these ships, their plan to advance to Onigashima Island would crumble. Nevertheless, even with only seven members left, Kinemon's group remained determined to assassinate Kaido, it was at this moment that Kinemon realized that there must be a spy within their group. To their astonishment, the traitor turned out to be Kanjiro. It was he who had relayed all their plans to Orochi, leading to the destruction of their ships. This made Kinemon unable to believe that his close friend had betrayed him. It turned out that Kanjiro had been living a life of deception since childhood, as he had been saved by Orochi and served him alone. Suddenly, Kaido's troops appeared and encircled them. This immediately provoked Kinemon's anger and he struck at Kanjiro, but it was merely a clone of him, while the real Kanjiro was actually behind them, capturing Momo, so, Kaido's troops launched an attack on them while they were unsure of what to do, suddenly, Luffy's group appeared and attacked Kaido's troops, both Law and Kid also arrived at this moment, the three worst generation captains were now together, which rekindled Kinemon's hope because Luffy's group had arrived in time to help them, however, Kanjiro couldn't understand why they were there, because he had already reported all the plans to Orochi, so that he could go and destroy all of the Straw Hat crew's ships, it turns out that the Sunny ship was constructed by Frankie using Adam Wood, therefore, regular bombs wouldn't be able to destroy it, at this point, they continued to attack the Sunny, but they were intercepted by Nami and Sanji's group, Luffy was puzzled about the absence of the 4200 samurai, so Kinemon explained to him the story of Kanjiro's betrayal, they also revealed that today was the celebration of the alliance between the two emperors, which shocked everyone, but Luffy felt very excited about it, and he even competed with Law and Kid, determined to be the one to defeat Kaido and Big Mom first, so, all three of them charged forward to attack Kaido's troops, Law teleported their ship into the sky, while Kid was attracting metal towards himself, Luffy activated Gear 4, and the three of them together destroyed the enemy ship, suddenly, Kiyoshiro's ship appeared, and Kanjiro thought that reinforcements had arrived. Unexpectedly, he drew his sword, and he directly sliced their ship into two pieces. This left Kanjiro astonished, while Kinemon was also bewildered by what was happening. Then, Kiyoshiro revealed that he was indeed Denjiro, another member of the Nine Red Scabbards. It turned out that after Odin's death, Denjiro had experienced great sorrow, which led him to change his appearance and become a spy alongside Orochi. He had also prepared enough ships to bring the 4200 samurai to their location and had gathered an additional 1200 warriors. This brought their total army to 5400. Thanks to this, it helped the whole group regain their determination to fight against them. While Luffy and Kid were still competing to attack Kaido's troops, Kanjiro, furious, was about to escape. Unexpectedly, Kuamatsu immediately arrived to intercept him, but Kanjiro still managed to capture Momo and take him away. At this moment, Sanji immediately pursued him, so, he spun his hair, creating a cloud of black ink, he obstructed Sanji and attacked everyone, Momo realized that he still couldn't be as strong as Odin, but he reassured everyone not to worry and to focus on defeating Kaido and saving Wano, this made Luffy very happy, and he promised, wait for me, Momo, I'll come to rescue you, on the enemy's side, they still had one ship and continuously used long-range cannons to attack the samurai's ship, while Denjiro was worried, an unexpected column of water smashed through the enemy ship, leaving Luffy wondering who had intervened. It turned out to be Jimbei. This immediately brought joy to Luffy's group, because, in the end, Jimbei had finally arrived. So, everyone was overjoyed and ran to embrace Jimbei. At this moment, Jimbei officially became the Straw Hat crew's helmsman. While Kinemon's group was discussing their plan to attack Kaido, they saw Luffy's group destroying the enemy's gates. With just one Red Hawk attack, Luffy defeated all the soldiers, leaving all the samurai amazed at the Straw Hat crew's incredible strength. On Orochi's side, he was frolicking with the girls and remained oblivious to what was happening. As for Kaido, 
He was instructing his soldiers to summon his son to come to him. He wanted his son to meet with Big Mom to discuss a significant matter. At this moment, the Tobi Ropo had arrived. They are the six commanders ranked just below Kaido's All-Stars. As for Luffy's group, they had found a lot of alcohol from the enemy soldiers, so they decided to drink together, while Kinnaman was also very resolute. They were determined to win this battle and regain control of Wano country. Suddenly, Luffy decided to place his drink on the ground. It turned out he wanted to celebrate the victory with the people of Wano. So, everyone also decided to place their drinks on the ground and proceeded towards Onigashima Island. At this point, Kid still wanted to compete with Luffy to see who would defeat Kaido first. Eventually, they all arrived at Kaido's territory. Suddenly, three enemy soldiers spotted them. So, Usopp immediately launched an attack that made them faint. However, Kinnaman ordered everyone to destroy the ship because they were ready to give their lives in this battle. Witnessing the unwavering spirit of the samurai, the Luffy group became even more confident in them. Kinnaman then used his devil fruit powers to create a portal to disguise the samurai as Kaido's soldiers. Kid also went through the transformation, even though it slightly compromised his image, but he could still fight Kaido, and that was what mattered. Luffy was quite thrilled and eagerly embraced the opportunity to cosplay. So, everyone was now prepared and ready to infiltrate Kaido's banquet. Kinnaman and Denjiro would infiltrate the castle from the rear. Meanwhile, Luffy and Kid's group entered directly through the main entrance. When Kid didn't follow the plan, Luffy decided to chase after him. However, upon entering, they came across Kaido's soldiers feasting. Meanwhile, Zoro also followed Luffy. And while they were waiting outside for Frankie to retrieve secret weapons, Zoro noticed that these people were casually drinking alcohol and making fun of the people of Wano who couldn't even find clean water to drink. He immediately unleashed Haki, causing them to pass out. Luffy, upon seeing them comfortably eating meat and mocking the Wano citizens, was reminded of Otama, who had shared her food with him. They even wasted the food and spilled all the red bean soup on Luffy. While Otama was happy with just a bowl of red bean soup, at that moment, they even kicked over the red bean soup pot right in front of Luffy. This infuriated Luffy, and he used Gear 3 to defeat all these foolish guys. Suddenly, Kid saw Luffy taking action first, that made him quite excited as well. Zoro, on the other hand, used Enma to release his hockey and slice through the entire tower, putting an end to these guys feasting for good. On Kaido's side, the six Tobi Ropo have gathered together and were instructed to find Yamato, Kaido's son, and bring him here to prepare for an important announcement that he is about to make. At this moment, Luffy and Zoro were still causing chaos at the banquet. Suddenly, Apu noticed that something was amiss, and he realized that it was Luffy. He decided to inform Queen about this discovery. Both of them knew that it was time to fight, so they decided to attack together, leaving Queen puzzled about how Luffy managed to escape from Udon prison. At this moment, he declared, if anyone could capture Luffy and Zoro, he would nominate that person to become a Tobi Ropo. This fired up the soldiers, Kid found Apu. He was furious because Apu had betrayed the alliance last time. That's why Kid was brought here by Kaido. At this point, Apu used sound to attack Luffy and Zoro, leaving both of them confused about why he could attack them. So, they decided not to transform anymore and face them head on. However, no matter how far they got from Apu, he could still attack them, seeing Luffy and Zoro being held back by Apu. Kid immediately gathered metal to transform into a giant iron arm. He then punched Apu in the face, surprising Queen, who didn't expect Kid to also escape from prison. At this moment, Kid began to interrogate Apu because he had revealed their location to Kaido. Apu then counterattacked Kid in an attempt to escape. When Kid was about to gather more metal, a giant suddenly appeared and attacked him. Kid was caught off guard, and that's when Luffy jumped in to help him. Luffy told Kid that they didn't have much time left. The important thing now is to conserve energy for the battle against Kaido. So they all ran together, unexpectedly, Apu continued to attack them covertly. This made all three of them angry because he kept obstructing them constantly. So Killer immediately told everyone to cover their ears. It turns out that as long as they don't hear his sound, they will be fine. So they all continued to move forward, on Kinnaman and Chopper's side. They were infiltrating the castle from behind. Suddenly, Big Mom spotted Chopper, which frightened him. Big Mom's children were still trying to cross the waterfall because they couldn't believe that Big Mom had allied with Kaido. They thought they could succeed this time, however, another bird suddenly appeared, and it turned out to be Marco the Phoenix. So, he kicked them, causing them to fall again. It turns out that Nakomamushi had informed Marco to come here because he wanted to protect Luffy, 
In accordance with the wishes of Whitebeard and Ace, on Kaido and Orochi's side, they saw Kanjiro returning, and he brought Momo back to them. Luffy, at this point, had been separated from Zoro. Seeing these soldiers continuing to chase him, he took care of all of them. At this moment, Big Mom recognized Chopper as a member of the Straw Hat crew. Chopper and Usopp immediately turned the car around, diverting Big Mom's attention elsewhere, allowing Kinemon's group to continue advancing. Orochi, on the other hand, realized that Luffy's group and the Nine Red Scabbards had infiltrated the castle, which filled him with fear. Orochi immediately decided to proceed with the execution of Momo. Luffy decided to continue using Kaido's subordinates to practice Ryu. Suddenly, Ulti and Page One appeared, surprising Luffy. He doesn't know who this crazy girl is. Ulti asked, Who are you? Luffy replied, I am the one who will become the Pirate King. This made her angry because he was being so bold while inside Kaido's castle. So, Ulti immediately flew up and attempted to headbutt Luffy. Therefore, he headbutted her in response, causing the floor beneath Luffy's feet to give way and collapse. At this moment, Ulti and Page One decided to unleash their ancient zone devil fruits, transforming into two massive dinosaurs, but Luffy remained unharmed and immediately jumped up. He realized he had been careless because this was a Yonko stronghold, so, he decided to fight them alone. Luffy then grabbed Ulti's horn and threw her away. Afterward, he punched Page One, knocking him to the ground. Seeing her brother being hit, Ulti became furious and transformed into a dinosaur to capture Luffy. At that moment, as she was about to deliver a powerful headbutt to Luffy, suddenly, a person wielding an iron mace ran towards them. He immediately used Thunderclap 8 trigrams and struck Ulti directly, knocking her out on the spot. To Luffy's surprise, the person who intervened said, I've been waiting for you for a long time. When Luffy was still dazed and didn't understand what was happening, he suddenly grabbed Luffy and ran off, letting him know, I am Yamato, Kaido's son, Chopper and Usopp were driving away while shooting at Big Mom, but they still couldn't stop her, so they were caught up by Big Mom. When Big Mom was about to use her devil fruit power to take the souls of both Chopper and Usopp, Prometheus informed her that he had found Zeus. This caused Big Mom to leave, sparing Chopper and Usopp and leaving them relieved to have escaped death. The Nami group realized that Big Mom was approaching, so they quickly ran away. Meanwhile, on Robin and Jimbei's side, they saw Orochi preparing to execute Momo, which made him very excited, because by killing Momo, Wano country would lose its hope. When Luffy heard that Yamato was Kaido's son, Luffy immediately ordered Yamato to stop. At that moment, Luffy was attacking Yamato, thinking that he was an enemy. However, Yamato only wanted to talk to Luffy. Suddenly, Luffy used his fiery punch, which reminded Yamato of Ace. So, Yamato asked Luffy for 10 minutes to talk. Meanwhile, Orochi was proclaiming his intent to execute Momo and referred to Toki, Momo's mother, as a witch for sending Momo and the Nine Red Scabbards 20 years into the future. Jimbei, Robin, and all the other samurai were forced to laugh along with them at that moment. Unable to reveal their true feelings, on the other hand, Law was sailing around the castle from the back, he used his devil fruit power to teleport the nine red scabbards into the castle through the rear entrance. Surprisingly, Marco was also bringing Nakomamushi with him. When they saw Izo, it made Kiku very happy because Izo is Kiku's older brother. Finally, the entire group was assembled, determined to assassinate Kaido. While Orochi was preparing to execute Momo, Kaido suddenly appeared behind him and announced his plans for the new Onigashima project. Yamato had already told Luffy that 20 years ago, he witnessed the legendary moment of Odin and coincidentally found Odin's logbook. Yamato read the entire logbook and learned a lot about the world. Since then, Yamato decided to become Kazuki Odin. However, when Yamato took off the mask, it surprised Luffy because it turned out that Yamato was a woman and she revealed that she had met Ace. That surprised Luffy, and he learned that Yamato had met Ace. It turned out that Ace had come to Onigashima to challenge Kaido, but he only met Yamato, and the two became friends. Ace shared a lot about Luffy with Yamato during their time together, on the side of the Nine Red Scabbards. When they were about to enter through the door, Kanjiro, the traitor, blocked their way. Kanjiro even recounted how he had tortured Momo, further fueling the anger of the Nine Red Scabbards, so they resolved to deal with him. The Nine Red Scabbards easily dealt with Kaido's soldiers, the nine red scabbards easily dealt with Kaido's soldiers. As for Kiku, she decided to have a battle with Kanjiro. Kiku questioned if everything he had done with them was just an act, to which Kanjiro admitted that it was all a performance. 
So, Kiku drew her sword to confront the traitor. Nami's group was captured by Big Mom, who was determined to retrieve Zeus. Yamato wanted to leave the island, but she was restrained by Kaido, and if she left, the shackle would explode. Surprisingly, Luffy said, I can help you unlock it. At this moment, they heard Kaido announce that the Beast Pirates and the Big Mom Pirates would form an alliance. Suddenly, Big Mom also appeared, with a bounty of 4,388,000,000 berries. So both Yonko announced that they will obtain the One Piece treasure, which excited their crews greatly. Surprisingly, Kaido delivered important news to Orochi. This land of Wano will be mine. This infuriated Orochi, who kept cursing Kaido as a deceitful traitor. Therefore, Kaido drew his sword and struck Orochi, forcing him into eternal silence, causing everyone to be frozen in shock. As for Momo, he was being threatened by Kaido. Suddenly, Luffy and Yamato fell from the ceiling. Luffy told Yamato to lead the way to rescue Momo. On Kiku's side, she was still fighting against Kanjiro. Despite him continuously drawing headless samurais to block Kiku, she still overwhelmed him. Surprisingly, he started to act remorseful and apologize deeply, which shook Kiku's emotions. Seizing this opportunity, he secretly attacked Kiku. At this moment, Kiku made a decision and swung her sword to finish off Kanjiro, bringing an end to his wicked role. When Kinemon and Denjiro arrived, they were filled with sorrow because they had always considered Kanjiro a friend, and so, the whole group decided to continue their advance. Kaido then declared that he would move Onigashima to the flower capital, and the one who became the shogun of Wano country is Yamato. This made Yamato angry, while Luffy and Yamato were trying to run to where Kaido was. Kaido remembered Momo from 20 years ago. When Kaido threatened him, he still didn't dare to reveal his name, Kaido said. Come on, tell me, kid, what's your name? But this time, Momo was different. Thanks to the encouragement from Luffy and the memory of his great father, he found the courage to speak his name. He said, I am Kazuki Momonosuke, the one who will become the shogun of Wano country. This brought joy to everyone. Luffy decided to remove the explosive handcuffs from Yamato, who initially believed that Kaido wouldn't be cruel enough to attach explosive restraints to her. However, when they actually detonated, it made her furious, realizing that Kaido indeed intended to kill her. As Yamato was about to declare war against Kaido, Luffy stopped her. Understanding that the current moment was not the right time for their battle, suddenly, the nine red scabbards appeared from behind, catching King and Jack by surprise, leaving them no time to react. The entire group then advanced to attack Kaido. To their astonishment, the swords wielded by the nine red scabbards pierced through Kaido's iron-like skin, intensifying the pain of his old wound inflicted by Odin. Kaido quickly realized that the nine red scabbards had learned Ryu. Much like Odin, they managed to bring him down to the ground. Seeing Kaido defeated, all the samurai decided to remove their disguises and give their all in the battle against them. Ulti has found Yamato. It turns out she is still very angry for being defeated by Yamato earlier. Suddenly, Big Mom sees Luffy, which makes her furious and say, Finally, I've found you, Straw Hat. So, she immediately attacks Luffy, and Luffy retaliates using Gear 3. However, Big Mom still completely overwhelms Luffy. At this point, Nami and Carrot have managed to escape. So, Nami is determined to retrieve Zeus and finally manages to locate him. This terrifies Zeus, leaving him unsure of which side to stand with. On Kinemon's side, they are still trying to hold Kaido down, hoping to defeat him this time. Surprisingly, Kaido easily blew them away. Big Mom was asking Luffy. Do you think you can defeat me? Luffy replied, I don't just think I can defeat you. I'll defeat Kaido and all his subordinates too. This statement excited Yamato, and she realized that she wanted to stand side by side with Luffy and accompany him on his journey, helping to boost the morale of all the samurai. While Zoro, Kid, and Law were still dealing with Kaido's troops, Queen received news from outside that Marco and Parasparo had formed an alliance. It turned out that he didn't believe that Big Mom would ally with Kaido. At this moment, Kaido heard Luffy's declaration of war, so he transformed into a dragon and flew up to the ceiling, accepting their challenge. While Kinemon's group was still following, Kaido decided to use the nine red scabbards as a warm-up. Suddenly, all the Mink tribe warriors appeared to provide support. It turned out that today was the full moon, which would help them transform into their Sulong forms, increasing their combat power. This excited Kaido even more. Suddenly, one of Kaido's all-stars, Jack, appeared, this made Inwarashi furious because Jack had destroyed his mink tribe in the past. So, they all began to transform into their Sulong forms, 
Jack transformed into his devil fruit form, the mammoth, but he didn't expect that the fighting power of the mink tribe had greatly increased by this point. At this time, Momo is being monitored by king and queen, but Shinobu attempted to rescue him discreetly. She then used her devil fruit power, the aging ability, to rust and weaken the chains. They thought they were close to rescuing Momo, but unexpectedly, King noticed them, he promptly grabbed Shinobu and threw her away. Suddenly, Momo's chains were cut, and he was lifted into the air. When King attempted to attack, he was intercepted, it was Sanji who had turned invisible to rescue Momo. He then handed Momo over to Shinobu so that he could engage in a battle with King. However, King proved to be extremely powerful. He managed to block all of Sanji's attacks and then transformed into a dinosaur to chase and capture Sanji, and he struck Sanji, causing him to fall straight to the ground. At this point, Luffy told Yamato to go protect Momo. As she left, Big Mom continued to provoke Luffy, with just one swing of Big Mom's weapon, that attack pierced through the castle and even split the surface of the sea, causing fear among all the samurai. This is the power of the Yonko. When she summoned Zeus, she was surprised to discover that Zeus had been taken away by Nami and had fled, so she managed to retrieve Zeus and forced him to attack Nami immediately, causing Nami to scream in fear, saying, I hate you, Zeus. Fortunately, Frankie and Brooke appeared just in time and rammed their vehicle straight into Big Mom's face. As for Brooke, he cut Zeus in half, which made Nami very happy because she was saved. So Luffy was reassured and could proceed to the rooftop to fight Kaido. At that moment, while Yamato was still being pursued by Ult, she decided to defeat Ult once again. Eventually, Yamato found Momonosuke, which made them both cautious because they didn't know who Yamato was. Fortunately, Luffy arrived and informed them that Yamato was an ally. When Luffy left, Yamato claimed to be Odin, which confused both Momonosuke and Shinobu since Odin was a man. As a result, they decided to continue running away, as Big Mom regained her composure and was about to continue her attack. A group of enormous creatures suddenly appeared, they were revealed to be the numbers. Created by Kaido, seeing them capturing Chopper and Usopp, Frankie immediately used his laser to shoot at them. When Big Mom attempted to sneak attack Frankie, she was swiftly caught by Jinbei and thrown to Robin. They rolled her outside the castle. Meanwhile, at the top of the dome, even though the Mink tribe had been powered up, they were still not a match for Jack. So, the dog and the cat decided to transform into their Sulong forms, which made Jack start to feel a bit afraid. Unexpectedly, they moved very quickly, and in the blink of an eye, they were already in front of Jack. As for Luffy, he was still trying to find a way to the top of the dome. By chance, he bumped into Zoro, so he decided to go with Luffy. However, when they flew up, Queen immediately extended his neck to bite them, causing him to throw them back to the ground. Frankie at this point has reassembled General Frankie to battle the numbers, Sanji, on the other hand, has recovered thanks to the resilient Germa 66 suit, so he is not injured. At this moment, Luffy's entire crew has regrouped and decided to support Luffy in flying back to the rooftop one more time. Meanwhile, who is informing Queen, in the 6 Toby Ropo, there was a traitor, and it turned out to be Drake, he was an undercover agent for the Navy, while Luffy's group decided to deal with these numbers, Luffy activated Gear 4 to engage in battle. Drake realized that he had been exposed and decided to make a run for it, however, as soon as he stepped outside, he bumped into Luffy, so, he immediately knocked out two of the numbers together with Luffy, because Drake remembered that Kobe once said Luffy was amazing, so he decided to form an alliance with Luffy, which surprised Luffy, when Drake tried to explain, Zoro immediately attacked him because they didn't trust Drake, but surprisingly, Luffy decided to trust him, which infuriated the others. Luffy continued running towards Kaido, and suddenly, Page One appeared and attacked them, so Usopp quickly shot pepper spray into his mouth. This made him angry, so he decided to deal with Usopp first. Realizing the danger, Nami hurriedly ran ahead to be safe. While Zoro was fighting with Drake, he realized that Drake was still hiding his true identity. This made Zoro unable to trust him. Suddenly, Apu appeared which infuriated both Zoro and Drake, and they attacked him, Queen, on the other hand, used his six-barrel gun to shoot at them and the samurai. Drake realized that these were indeed his disease-inducing ice oni bullets, he continued to shoot others, causing the samurai to turn into ice demons, he even shot his own subordinates, as for Big Mom, she had been taken outside the castle, when she intended to continue inside, she encountered Parisparo and Marco, at this point, he still couldn't believe that his mother was in an alliance with Kaido, 
but she said that everything was indeed true. It turns out that Big Mom is only trying to use Kaido to obtain one piece. On the other hand, when Inwarashi and Nakomamushi transformed into their Sulong forms, they were able to easily overpower Jack and defeat him, forcing Kaido to intervene. As Jack is one of his loyal all-stars, Marco realized that they were the enemies, so he unleashed his devil fruit powers to attack Big Mom. At the same time, Kaido was about to attack Kinemon's group, he immediately sliced Kaido's fireballs in half. Even though he could have hit Kaido, he did not weaken. When Kinemon's group continued to advance, Kaido attacked them again, they didn't give up and continued to run towards Kaido to strike him with their swords. But no matter how they attacked, it was like a mosquito bite to him, at this point. The Kinemon group continued to stand up and fight back against Kaido. They all unleashed their most powerful techniques, surprising Kaido as they were able to cut through his tough skin. When Kaido was about to breathe fire towards them, Raizo used a ninja technique to absorb all of Kaido's flames and countered him with his own fire. Surprisingly, Kaido remained unharmed. They decided to use the twin blades technique, recalling Odin's technique, and launched an attack on Kaido. Despite Kaido continuously shooting flames at them, they managed to dodge and even block his flames. This made Kaido feel like he was seeing Odin again. They managed to strike Kaido's scar, causing it to bleed and hurt the most. However, even though they thought they had defeated Kaido, he was still not weakened. It turns out that Kaido was just reminiscing about his disappointing battle with Odin. The attacks of the nine red scabbards were like mosquito bites to him. So, Kaido released a sharp, sword-like gust of wind, which severed one of Kiku's arms. On Zoro's side, they are being attacked by those who are infected with the ice demon virus. Chopper realizes that if they let those infected with the ice demon virus touch them, they will also become infected. Meanwhile, as Shinobu is trying to escape with Momo, then they were discovered and attacked by Kaido's troops. Despite her injuries, Shinobu is determined to protect Momo. When they were about to capture Momo, Yamato rushed in to confront them, gaining Momo's trust. On Chopper's side, they were still fighting against the ice oni while dealing with the contagious virus that queen had released they all started losing control causing many samurai to also become infected chopper was determined to create a cure to save everyone on kinemon's side seeing kiku lose one arm he used his flame sword to cauterize the wound and stop the bleeding despite the intense pain kiku showing great determination continued to stand and fight witnessing the resolve of the nine red scabbards Kaido decided to revert to his human form to conclude the battle. At this moment, the samurai who were infected by the ice demon virus were considering self-termination. However, Hio encouraged them to trust in Chopper, believing that he would find a way to save them. On the other hand, Queen felt that things were not hot enough yet, so he continued to shoot his ice demon bullets at both the samurai and his own subordinates. Zoro realized that the more they fought these infected individuals, the more frenzied they became. Suddenly, Queen spotted Apu attempting to flee and came up with a new game. He tossed Apu the only antidote for the ice demon virus. Within one hour, if they didn't get the antidote, they would all die. So everyone chased after Apu to obtain the antidote. Meanwhile, Marco was still battling Big Mom, and unexpectedly, Marco's flames could overpower Big Mom's, as the flames of a phoenix were quite unique. Suddenly, Big Mom captured Marco while Zoro and Drake were attempting to catch Apu to get the antidote for everyone. Chopper realized that the ice oni virus was causing a drop in body temperature and, to his surprise, he got infected as well. Meanwhile, Nami was still being pursued by Ul-T and Page One. They insulted Luffy, calling him an arrogant brat because they believed that the true Pirate King was undoubtedly Kaido. This made Nami and Usopp angry, so they got into a heated argument with them. However, both of them were still being pursued by the enemies. Nami was caught by Ul-T who forced her to retract her earlier statement. However, Nami managed to fight back and send Ulti flying, but she was still uninjured and immediately jumped to headbutt Nami. Seeing Nami in danger, Usopp immediately fired at Ulti. Unexpectedly, Ulti jumped up and headbutted him, causing him to faint. However, hearing her continued bragging, Usopp craftily created a carnivorous plant that captured her. Suddenly, Page One also appeared. No matter how they attacked, Usopp couldn't penetrate their tough skin, so he was headbutted by Ul-T once again, causing his bones to break. At this point, she turned to Nami and forced her to say that Luffy could never become the Pirate King, despite being very afraid. Knowing that one more headbutt from Ul-T could kill her, Nami remained resolute and refused to betray her captain. She declared, Luffy will become the Pirate King, 
which infuriated Ulti even more as she intended to punish Nami. Luckily, Otama arrived in time to rescue Nami. On Marco's side, he was about to be ambushed by Parasparo when Carrot rushed in. Seeing the Candyman enemy filled her with anger and the desire for immediate revenge for Puro. Both of them transformed into their Sulong forms and attacked Parasparo, targeting his eyes. This made him angry, thinking that Perot's death had nothing to do with him. Suddenly, Big Mom threw Marco back towards them because she wanted to return to the castle immediately. So, Marco continued to chase after them inside the castle. Otama had already taken Nami and Usopp to safety. On Yamato's side, she was using her own body to shield and protect Momo. When Yamato was about to unleash her devil fruit power to fight against Sasaki, General Frankie appeared with a giant and disrupted Sasaki's armored forces. This inadvertently created a large hole leading down to the lower floors, prompting Yamato to realize it was an opportunity to get Momo to safety. Before leaving, she delivered a powerful blow to the giant to assist Frankie in defeating him. Now, it was just Frankie and Sasaki left in the battle, on Kid's side, he was collecting all the metal within Kaido's castle in preparation for a brutal battle with Kaido. At that moment, Inu and Nako rushed to attack Kaido, but he easily sent both of them flying into a wall and caused them to lose their Sulong forms. When Kaido was about to deliver a decisive blow to finish them off, they all teamed up and attacked Kaido together, but he only needed to swing his iron mace lightly to send the whole group flying. Seeing that they wouldn't give up, he began to torture them, causing the entire castle to shake. Meanwhile, Big Mom was flying towards Kaido. Suddenly, Zoro noticed that Kiku's arm had fallen off, and he realized that something had happened. He saw the samurai gradually turning into Ice Oni. Zoro knew that they were running out of time, so he immediately rushed to attack and defeat Apu, reclaiming the antidote. So he handed it over to Chopper to concentrate on advancing to the top of the castle, while Sanji and Jimbei were assisting Luffy in running up to the roof. Sanji accidentally used hockey and heard a girl calling for help, Sanji immediately followed his heart and rushed to her aid, however, as soon as he broke through the door, he fell into a trap set by Black Maria and her gang. Sanji had been captured, but even in captivity, he couldn't resist his fondness for women. On Chopper's side, he informed everyone that fire could be used to slow down the spread of the ice demon virus while he worked on making the antidote. Queen became irritated and tried to shoot Chopper, but Zoro managed to intercept him. Suddenly, Onigashima Island began to shake leaving everyone puzzled. Marco then appeared and asked Zoro if they needed his assistance. While Yamato was taking Momo outside, she suddenly noticed that the entire Onigashima island had been lifted into the sky by Kaido. It turns out Kaido intended to move it to the flower capital. Meanwhile, Marco, knowing that his flames could slow down the spread of the ice oni virus, used his flames to help everyone regain consciousness. So Chopper had more time to work on synthesizing the antidote. This made Queen furious and he ordered his subordinates to capture Chopper. In response, everyone gathered to protect Chopper. Jimbei and Luffy are getting very close to Kaido, but suddenly they are surrounded by a group of gifters. Jimbei decides to stay behind to hold them off and let Luffy continue advancing. However, he encounters one of the Tobi Ropo members. On the other hand, Frankie is in a battle with Sasaki, who transforms into a three-horned ancient dinosaur, and they begin their fight. Yamato has told Momo about the first time she met Ace. It turns out that Ace came to Onigashima to defeat Kaido, but only Yamato was inside the castle at that time. They fought each other for a long time, and Ace realized that Yamato deeply hated his father because Kaido had imprisoned her and kept her captive on this island since childhood. Yamato couldn't do what she wanted and felt trapped. From that moment on, they became close friends, and Ace shared a lot about Luffy with Yamato which made her very interested in him. Suddenly, when Momo and Shinobu found out that Yamato is Kaido's child, it frightened them. However, they continued to trust her. On Otama's side, she also told Nami about Ace, but she questioned why Luffy could talk about Ace's death so casually. So Nami explained to her that Ace was Luffy's older brother and died right in front of him, which surprised Otama, because she realized that Luffy was even more in pain than she was. At this moment, Queen's henchmen were surrounding Marco and they attempted to stab him. However, they were shocked to find out that Marco was immune to physical damage. He then transformed into his Phoenix Zone Devil Fruit form to act as a shipper and carry Zoro to the top to confront Kaido. Suddenly, King and Queen appeared to block his way. In response, Marco grabbed their heads and kicked Zoro up to the castle's peak so he could focus on battling the two of them comfortably. Meanwhile, 
Big Mom had also found Kaido, as the nine red scabbards were defeated. Luffy was running as fast as he could, heading straight towards the peak of Onigashima Island. Kid had also reached Kaido's location. When Kid was about to face the two Yonko all by himself, at that moment, Law and Zoro also arrived, and Law wondered where Luffy was. Finally, he appeared before Kaido and Big Mom. Suddenly, Luffy continued to move forward. He advanced closer to where they were standing, they thought Luffy would declare war on them, but Luffy surprised them by passing right by both of them because he saw that the nine red scabbards had already been defeated right in front of him. At this moment, Kinnaman pleaded with Luffy, saying, please help us save Wano country. Suddenly, Kaido jumped in to attack Luffy, so he used Ryu and delivered a massive fiery punch directly to Kaido, knocking him to the ground. Even Big Mom was surprised that Kaido was injured by Luffy's punch. Kid didn't know what kind of hockey Luffy was using at this point, so Zoro explained to him, it's called Ryu, a type of hockey that can damage the opponent from the inside. Even Kaido was surprised at how rapidly Luffy had progressed, because in their previous encounter, he had defeated Luffy with just one strike, in the world. Only figures like Shanks, Odin, Whitebeard, Roger, and Rox are among those who can stand up to Kaido. So this time, he wants to see if Luffy is worthy of fighting him. Thus, both of them released their conqueror's hockey. Luffy foresaw Kaido's attack and tried to dodge. But he was still injured and bleeding from the head due to Kaido's incredible speed. Suddenly, Big Mom also arrived to attack him. So, Zoro immediately ran to split Prometheus in half. Kaido continued to jump in, intending to attack Luffy once more. Fortunately, Law managed to teleport him away in time. It turns out Law was angry because Luffy had given him orders to teleport the Kinnaman group downstairs again. So Kid took the opportunity to taunt them, and the three of them started arguing. Suddenly, Big Mom continued to attack. So Luffy challenged them, saying that whoever dodged her attack would be the loser. Even though he knows it's foolish, both of them join in leaving Zoro utterly frustrated with these three fools. Surprisingly, they aren't hurt much, and Zoro teases Killer for being defeated by him earlier. However, Killer explains that he didn't use his weapons during their previous encounter. So, both of them rush to attack Kaido, but they still can't penetrate his tough skin. At this point, Luffy decided to unleash Gear 4, while Kid gathered all the metal and created a gigantic metal robot. Law, on the other hand, released his devil fruit powers, they all joined forces to attack Kaido. Luffy continuously threw three punches that sent Kaido flying. Kid used his two robot arms to squeeze him, and Law shifted massive stone blocks to attack Kaido. However, all these attacks seemed like mosquito bites to Kaido, so he released his devil fruit power and transformed into a dragon. Kaido took flight and started blowing wind like blades attacking everyone, so the group had to dodge and continue their ascent. Luffy immediately jumped and gave him a punch. Kid also leapt in to attack. Law searched for Kaido's internal organs to deliver an electric shock from the inside. Then Killer stripped off Kaido's protective scales. Suddenly, Big Mom launched a sneak attack on him. So Luffy rushed over to deliver a kick to save him. When Kaido was about to shoot fire at Luffy, Zoro quickly dashed over and split his flames in two. He decided to pour all of his hockey into Enma's blade, making Big Mom feel the strength of that attack. Kaido, on the other hand, saw the image of Odin and immediately dodged it. Then Big Mom unleashed a continuous stream of lightning strikes at them. But this move couldn't harm Luffy, even Kaido's fire couldn't affect him. So Luffy rushed in and delivered a powerful punch to him, causing Kaido to fall to the ground again. They all thought he had been defeated. When Luffy was about to unleash his finishing move, he realized that he had reached his limit as he had run out of hockey. Big Mom recognized that this was the moment to finish off Luffy. So Zoro immediately took Luffy and ran away, while Law teleported to Big Mom and electrocuted her. Meanwhile, Kid and Killer were planning to finish off Kaido, but to their surprise, he had regained his composure. It turned out that Luffy's attacks were like mosquito bites to him. Kaido then rolled up into a destructive whirlwind, causing everyone to be swept into the sky. Seizing this opportunity, Kaido swallowed Luffy whole. So Zoro immediately released all of his hockey into Enma and used his three sword style techniques to rescue his captain. He sliced through Kaido's tough skin, causing him to vomit Luffy out. At this point, Kaido realized that the sword was Odin's. He continued to use his wind scythe's attack against the group. In another room, the CP0 agents were still monitoring the battle. Currently, the samurai side had 5,400 people, while the beast pirates had a whopping 30,000. Finally, the rampage of the wind scythes came to an end. 
leaving everyone battered. Suddenly, they saw Kaido transform into his human beast form, his most powerful state. On the other hand, Otama had devised a plan. She sent speed to lure Kaido's gifters with Kibi Dango, a special type of dumpling she had prepared by squeezing her cheek. When the gifters consumed the Kibi Dango, they would become her subordinates. On Chopper's side, they were still working on creating the antidote. Suddenly, Marco's flames began to lose their effect and an enemy approached Hio, on Frankie's side, he was still battling with Sasaki, suddenly, he was restrained by the gifters, so, Sasaki took the opportunity and tried to strike Frankie, luckily, Tama led her army of gifters to the scene, so they immediately helped Frankie escape, unexpectedly, the sisters, Ulti and Page One, reappeared, when she tried to headbutt Nami, she immediately got an electric shock, meanwhile, Frankie punched Sasaki and unleashed his laser sword to strike him down, while Sanji was still being tortured by Black Maria, forcing him to call Robin over because she is the only one who can decipher the ancient language. On King's side, there is Bao Huang, who possesses information-related abilities, so he can communicate and know the entire situation of the battle. She saw the nine red scabbards group being teleported to a room. At this moment, Hio is suffering from the ice oni affliction, and unexpectedly, it helps him revert to his previous form. Black Maria is still relentlessly attacking Sanji, trying to force him to call for Robin's help. They thought Sanji was a resilient person who would never betray his friends, but unexpectedly, he shouted loudly, Save me, Robin Chan. This surprised them all. At this point, everyone could hear Sanji's voice, and they were underestimating him, but only his comrades understood that Sanji's weakness was women. When Black Maria was about to continue attacking Sanji, Robin immediately appeared and gave her a strong slap in the face. This made Sanji very happy that Robin had come to his rescue. At the same time, Brooke also appeared to save Sanji, so Sanji promptly left because he knew he couldn't win here for sure. As for Robin, she decided to fight against Black Maria because Sanji trusted her. On Luffy's side, they witnessed Kaido's most powerful human beast form, which surprised them all. Suddenly, Luffy asked Zoro for help to buy him some time, so Luffy decided to take a nap. Meanwhile, Jack was getting very angry and determined to find the nine red scabbards to seek revenge. Bao Huang noticed that someone had treated their injuries. On Black Maria's side, she decided to engage in a battle with Robin. At this moment, Hio, despite being affected by the ice oni disease, experienced a significant increase in his strength, which frightened Apu's subordinates. Suddenly, another group of people attacked, but Hio easily dealt with them. Hio thought of Luffy and believed that he had mastered Ryu, which would surely enable him to defeat Kaido and save Wano. While Luffy was still sleeping to recover his strength, Kaido and Big Mom continued to attack him. So, Zoro and Kid both tried to protect Luffy. Finally, Luffy woke up and decided to engage in a battle with them. While Hio was being attacked by Queen, Marco instantly kicked into his mouth, silencing him. Then, King also came to attack Marco, but he didn't back down, he stood alone against both of Kaido's all-stars, but he was gradually getting exhausted. At this point, Chopper had completed the antidote, so he immediately decided to test it on himself first. While Hio was reaching his limit and losing control, he instructed his subordinates to kill him for an honorable death, causing them great distress. At that moment, Chopper had finished crafting the antidote and rushed to intervene. He gave Hio the antidote successfully curing him of the ice oni affliction. This brought great joy to everyone. At this moment, Chopper had prepared a large cannon and fired the antidote directly into the midst of the battlefield. This action successfully cured both the samurai and queen's subordinates of the ice oni affliction. Queen became furious at Chopper for disrupting his plans, and when he attacked Chopper, queen's subordinates turned against him to protect Chopper. Marco immediately rushed to control Queen. So Chopper ate a candy and turned into a giant to punch Queen straight in the face. On Kinemon's side, as they regained consciousness, they were shocked to see an Odin double. They couldn't believe their eyes, because they couldn't believe that their Odin was still alive. He explained that it was Toki who had brought him to the future. However, Ashura suddenly realized that he was a fake Odin and attacked him. It turned out to be a decoy of the traitor Kanjuro. Suddenly, Kanjuro stabbed him, angering the group for falling for his deception once again. Kanjiro was actually looking for Momo to harm him. Meanwhile, Momo was hiding under Yamato's robe as they continued to advance into the castle. Luffy's group was still facing both Yonko, and despite continuous attacks from Kaido, Luffy kept getting up. At this moment, the fake Odin had prepared a bomb to attack Kinemon's group, 
So Ashura pushed him out to save everyone. The bomb then exploded, causing great pain as they lost another comrade. Therefore, they were determined to find Kanjiro for revenge. They were taken by surprise to encounter the likes of Jack. Seeing that he had defeated his subordinates, Inwarashi ordered the rest of the group to go ahead while he faced Jack alone, in another room at the same time. It turns out that Orochi was still alive and he set fire to Kaido's castle. Despite being struck by Kaido, Orochi's devil fruit ability allowed him to survive with up to eight lives. On Luffy's side, Kaido and Big Mom had started to unleash their hockey and launched a tremendously powerful combined attack, directly clashing with Luffy's group. Suddenly, Zoro jumped in alone to block that attack, ensuring the safety of the group. However, Zoro was seriously injured in the process, which made Luffy furious. Luffy then continued to use Ryu and landed a direct punch on Kaido, forcing him to dodge. On the other hand, the nine red scabbards accidentally encountered Orochi. This made him very angry because Kinemon's group kept clinging to him. Orochi then unleashed his devil fruit power, and they all teamed up to attack him together. At this point, Kinemon had also defeated the unscrupulous Orochi. On Luffy's side, he was fighting Kaido alone, and despite Kaido's overwhelming strength, he couldn't defeat Luffy. He continued to stand in front of Kaido, and both emperors, Kaido and Big Mom, continued to attack them together which made the entire group continuously receive blows. At this point, Kaido continued to mock Kinemon's group, which infuriated Zoro. He launched an attack, but Luffy immediately intervened. Using his Ryu and delivering a powerful punch to Kaido, Luffy declared, I will defeat you, Kaido. Luffy immediately unleashed Conqueror's Haki and engaged in direct combat with him. However, they were caught off guard as Big Mom attacked them sneakily prompting Zoro to step in and intercept her. At this moment, both Kid and Law were supporting Luffy, so they threw him directly at Kaido. Luffy then delivered a fiery punch to Kaido, but Kaido remained unfazed and counterattacked. Meanwhile, Kid and Law managed to capture Zeus. Zoro blocked Big Mom's Prometheus, while Killer needed to deal with Napoleon. Seeing her three homies being controlled, Big Mom became furious and punched Kid in the face, but he managed to lift her into the air. Law and Zoro immediately pushed her down into the sea. Their plan was to separate Big Mom and Kaido, but since Zeus was trapped by Kid, they couldn't rescue Big Mom, and she ended up falling into the sea. However, Prometheus was being obstructed by Zoro. Unexpectedly, Luffy had been defeated by Kaido at this point, so he rushed to help Prometheus. He immediately ran to the sea to rescue Big Mom. Fortunately, he managed to pull her ashore. At this point, she blamed Zeus for being too useless. Prometheus took advantage of the opportunity to ask Big Mom for a girlfriend in place of Zeus, and she agreed, while Kaido had defeated Luffy and was about to finish him off. Zoro spoke to Law. This is my final move, if I fail, it's up to you from here. Zoro then unleashed his full hockey and used Asura. He rushed forward and attacked Kaido with incredible speed, managing to injure him. This surprised Kaido, who turned to Zoro and asked, Do you also possess Conqueror's hockey? However, at this point, Zoro was completely exhausted, and he noticed a new scar on his chest. This angered Kaido, and he attacked Zoro. Law rushed to help but was knocked out by Kaido. Suddenly, Luffy regained consciousness, and Big Mom extracted a portion of her soul and placed it within the clouds, creating a new homie. This increase in power frightened Kid. As Big Mom's strength grew, she then unleashed a powerful attack that hit Kid, causing the entire castle to tremble. Kid and Killer were thrown inside the castle and were unexpectedly attacked by Hawkins. This angered Kid. As Hawkins had betrayed him once before, Killer decided to confront Hawkins to allow Kid to continue his pursuit of Big Mom. Hawkins then released his devil fruit power to engage in a battle with Killer. Kaido spoke, saying, If you were to join me, you could rule the world. In response, Luffy declared, I will definitely defeat you and save this kingdom. Suddenly, Luffy recalled the teachings of Hio and realized that when Kaido attacked, he had infused his attack with Conqueror's Haki. Kaido said, So, you noticed, you still can't defeat me, and with that, Kaido launched another attack against Luffy. So, Luffy began to release his Haki, and surprisingly, this time he was able to block Kaido's attack without even touching his iron mace. He then moved forward and delivered a powerful punch to Kaido, causing him to stagger back and fall to the ground leaving Law astonished at Luffy's newfound strength. That's when he asked Law to take Zoro down below, because this time, he was determined to defeat Kaido for sure. Today's video ends here. 
Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel to support Oni Chan in our future videos. Thank you for watching, and we love you all.